so let's review some additional features you can utilize in Mugen Hook. Obviously, I'm going to assume you're aware of the add-on and have already installed it. If not, check my previous Mugen Hook video in the description for those instructions. So the first feature we'll be looking at is game modes. With this option, you're able to show or hide game modes on any team-based mode. So this applies for Team Arcade, Team Versus, Team Co-op, Survival, Survival Co-op, and Watch Mode. This also works for the hidden tag mode that you can restore using Mugen Hook. For instance, with everything turned on, I have all four modes, including turns mode on the very bottom that you can't see. If I turn off simultaneous mode and turns by setting this to true, then that leaves me with only the tag mode and single mode showing. If I turn off single mode as well, then only the tag mode will appear in the aforementioned modes. I like this feature. I use it to turn off turns to reduce the option bloat since I'm mainly interested in simultaneous mode and tag mode for tag based gameplay when pairing it with add 004. So my options look like this in my preferred screen pack. First option is single. Second option is simultaneous, which works as a two player tag mode. And the third option is the restore tag option, which functions as a three player tag mode. So the next feature will be the default game mode cursor. And this is a short one. So pretty much you can set what game mode option the cursor defaults to upon startup at the versus screen. I set it to zero to start on singles mode. So the next feature will be the select timer. So this option adds a visual time limit on the select screen to which if the timer runs out, then the character your cursor is hovering over will automatically be selected. All that's needed to install this one is to copy and paste this group of text onto your system.dev file. Here are the options to be aware of. You can turn the feature on and off with zero and one using the active line. The text line dictates the display text of the timer function, allowing you to rename it. Font can be changed to any available font in your Mugen folder. Scale can be used to change the size of the font. Screen timer X and Y is used to position the text on your select screen. Expect to be constantly adjusting the last two options repeatedly to get the position and size of the text just right. Align option aligns the text either right, center, or left using negative one, zero, and one respectively. Amount is what you're going to change to define how many seconds will elapse before reaching zero. I set mine to 100 ticks since I have a huge roster. The ticks option works in tandem with the amount. This dictates the pace at which the amount of time depletes. 60 ticks under 60 frames per second means it will elapse in seconds. For my project, I set mine to 60, which means players have 100 seconds to choose a fighter. Finally, the zeros line determines if zero will be visually present before the number on the timer. Setting it to two means you will see zero nine or zero 10. One will mean you will see the zero before the nine, but when it comes to 10, you will only see one zero. Zero means you will only see a nine digit and for 10, you will see one zero. You can also use negative one in combination with an empty text field to completely hide the timer text, but still use the function. I personally set it to zero since the zero character for the font I'm using can be confused with an eight. My thoughts are this is an awesome Mugen Hook add-on for your Mugen game. It's a great quality of life feature that gives it a more official feel and it's aesthetically pleasing as well. Additionally, keep in mind for the timer that it works in all modes except training and watch mode. It activates after player one selects a game mode during single player or after both player one and two chooses a game mode during a two player mode. Also, if you happen to be using the select screen join in feature, then a new player joining means the timer will be reset. Speaking of, the next feature will be select screen join in. This allows player two or player one to join the game during the select screen by pressing start. This option works for only two modes, arcade and team arcade. If another player joins in, then the modes will be switched to versus and team versus respectively. To install, simply copy this block of text onto your system.dev file. Most of these config options are similar to select timer, so refer to the previous selection for the explanations. One difference is you can set the sound played whenever a player activates the plugin by hitting start. The sound is pulled from your system.sound file. I'm going to use the same menu select confirmation sound from the add 004 Mugen screen pack, which is group 0 index 1.
My opinion is this is a great feature and it really boosts the arcade like feel to your Mugen. So the next feature will be the sliding portraits. This feature allows the character portraits in the versus screen to slide towards a designated X axis location on the screen when the cursor is on the specific character. To install, we'll first need to turn on the feature by navigating to Mugenhook.ini and changing this setting to true. Then copy and paste this block of text onto your system.dev file anywhere under the select info bracket. So again, unfortunately, there's no getting around a lot of trial and error numbers wise to get the X, Y values appropriate to your specific screen pack. But here are some time saving tips to keep in mind. Sliding right increases the number positively and sliding left decreases the number negatively. So for my setup, it'll start 100 units to the left of the default P1 portrait position. This starting position is negative 100. Notice on the value without using Mugen hook, the player one offset is zero, which is the value of the ending position of the slide. The speed of the slide will be 10. And like I mentioned earlier, the max distance or end point will also be zero. Do the same for player two, but reverse the number difference. Also make sure the slide speed of player two has a negative number. The result will look something like this. Personally, I highly recommend using this feature. Easy to implement and boost the flare of the Mugen versus screen, which can otherwise seem stagnant in comparison to a real retail fighting game. So the next feature will be character variations. This option allows you to hold multiple selectable characters in a single cell. First, we'll set both the hook variations and the display position to true in the INI file. Then let's determine which character we want to use the character variations feature. I'm going to use two different versions of Yuri Sakazaki, a version by POTS and a version by Quick Fist. We'll open the game and make a mental note of the row and column location of the host character cell, which is POTS Yuri, and also the character IDs of all involved characters that will be stored. After that's done, open your variations data file located in your CFG folder. Here we'll input the row and column of the host cell. Then the next number will be the amount of characters that will be contained in a single cell. And finally, the character IDs of all the involved characters. Save it and then go back to Mugen. We can now see the variation is working after pressing start twice on the host character. So our next step will be hiding the imported character. If we go back to the main INI file and set hide variation characters to true, then although we've successfully hidden the involved character, it still creates a gap in the select screen. So we'll fix this by moving the character to the last slot of the select screen, which is located at this character ID. After doing that, then the character is successfully both hidden and unselectable, making the variation work as intended. Lastly, this feature allows you to utilize your system.sound file to produce a sound effect upon toggling a variation. On the main INI file under variations change, you can set the group and index of the sound here. In Fighters Factory, I can easily open this file and choose which sound I want played in this scenario. After noting the group and index number, I'll just paste it here and we're good to go. Character variations, in my opinion, are great like many features in this plugin. The only deal breaker is the fact that there is no easy way to indicate that a given cell has a variation contained within it. Without that, it's a complete mystery to new players as to which slot has a variation. The only way I'd imagine to get around this is to make a custom character portrait with a unique border or background to serve as a visual cue. But in my opinion, this is too much legwork on what is otherwise a brilliant feature. So hopefully an update can come out that can address this in the future. So the next feature will be random stage confirm sounds. So this is a simple one. This feature allows a pool of multiple sounds to be randomly selected upon choosing a stage. It only uses a group number from your system.sound file. What I like to do is add sounds on top of the default screen pack stage select sound. Since the default sound shares a group with another sound, I'll duplicate it in its own separate group, which will be two. Then I'll just gather sounds from other screen packs to include in this randomized pool. So I'll just go to a very old screen pack lying around called Mugen Coruscation, open the system sound file and find a sound I like. In this case, I have both of these sounds. So I'll save them as a WAV file on the desktop. Then I'll open the system sound of my current screen pack. 
select add one or more sounds and include them in the new group I just made starting from index one. Now I have three sounds indexed in group two. Save the sound file. Finally, let's head to our Mugen Hook INI file, navigate to random stage confirm sounds and set it to true. Then head to the random stage group lines and set it to the group we created, which is two. The last line will be three according to the amount of sounds I have in group two. And that's it. Save it, run Mugen, and as you can hear, the sounds will now randomly play between the three when selecting a stage. A great feature and easy to implement. So nothing more to say on that, so let's move on. And the final feature will be stage select only when both characters are selected. So the title of the last option is pretty self-explanatory. It hides the stage select until both players have finished selecting their characters, as you can see here. Unfortunately, this option doesn't work as intended. After the first player selects the character, the stage can still be selected. And honestly, I like the idea because whenever a player selects a character first and selects a stage, then it's pretty tacky for them to be able to move to that next step of selecting a stage when the other player is still selecting the character. So I really wanted this to work, but it just doesn't work because like I said, you can still select the stage for the player who's finished selecting the character. You just won't see the stage selection. So great idea. Hopefully it can be fixed in the future, but yeah. Uh, that's about it. So if you like this video, let me know what you think. If you've tried Moving Hook, then let me know your experience or what you found to be the best feature or the best add-on for your particular Moving project. So if you found this helpful, then please give it a like and consider subscribing. Let me know if you like these type of videos. I can definitely do more. So thanks and I'll see you later.